On today's episode, we are sifting through the waivers. There are so many running backs. We lay it out who we're prioritizing, who we're going to spend up on, who we're going to maybe try and avoid. Lots and lots of situations. Leave us some comments about who you're going to pick up. Make sure you subscribe right now and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Jason Moore, I'm Andy Holloway. Back at it, Tuesday edition of the show. Boy, this is going to be a tough one. <laughs> we have a oh. waiver wire episode today. And, so much uh, to say. Jason is already in full grimace uh, <laughs> with, a, with a shaking head and... Look, we are we are in the thick of it with you, fighting for our lives in our league of record. I mean, it's kind of cruise control on Dynasty right now. Oh, Dynasty's great. Dynasty's great. We we're, we're a combined. Uh, what is that? Uh, well, you are you are undefeated. Sixteen and, and two I, between and the three two of us. Losses. Yeah, yeah. So we are. Yeah, we're doing. So Dynasty. Well, who cares? Yeah, we're doing all right. Dyn- there. Dynasty's easy, but league of record. Oh, brother, uh, Mike and I are battling each other this week. We are sitting at two and four. And our teams are okay. They've scored a lot of points, but we're both at two and four. And one of us has to lose. And we're pretty much at that point in our the way that our league of record is, that will be a a, a death knell. Yeah, because you'll have to make the decision to sell for next year to build up. There were a lot of people that said Amen, brother, when you said that you had scored a lot of points in your two and four because they they have been coming in mm. on uh, on X. I've seen the messages, the teams that, with the high points scored totals. I have I have verified it. I have the third most points. I still uh, and I'm not spiked like my team has been just is sure like, has sure been consistently, yeah that was I didn't do an Al Borland put up 200 points and then 70 like I have put up enough points to win every single week and just I keep get, I keep getting buzz sawed by certain players I, I, Ooh, let's buzz saw you <laughs> one more time yeah I, w- I was gonna say the uh the whole points for narrative is it's a lot like looking at a consistency chart for a wide receiver you could have somebody that delivers consistently good scores every week or you could have somebody that on you know they have one huge week and then they score below the league average the other weeks and so it can be somewhat deceiving but let's just call a spade a spade when you see your points scored yeah is in the top half of the league and you aren't above 500, you feel as though the world has robbed you of your rightful place as a winner. And it that's fantasy. That's yeah. fantasy football. And to, to Jason's point about him and Mike squaring off, and we're in the waiver show today. We're talking about San Francisco running backs among a whole slew of running back options. But just understand that like they, Jason and Mike are living this out this week because on Monday Night Football – you're going to have either Christian McCaffrey on the field or you won't. You're also going to have two running backs in Jordan Mason and Elijah Mitchell that are going to, in some capacity, split time either as the feature backs or behind Christian McCaffrey. And Jason has Elijah Mitchell and Mike has Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, already on the roster. So it's just heal up, Christian. Just take take this week and just make sure that you feel better for the following week. I... Mike, I wish you and Christian McCaffrey the best after this week. I thank you. And I, I won't detail the source, but I mean, we have very close connections with the locker room in San Francisco. And Jason, was it helpful? Well, I, I, I think the you know we're trying to figure out is it Elijah Mitchell? Is it Jordan Mason? And it is unknown. Anyone that says that they know the answer is incorrect. Um, I believe that it is unknown even within the locker room as of now. Um, now, there it, there will be an answer. Uh, by the, yeah, <laughs> by yeah, the end of will. this week, uh, we'll know whether Christian McCaffrey is playing and we'll know whether it's Elijah Mitchell or Jordan Mason as the 
primary man up next, and um, <laughs> I will be. I, I believe it is Elijah Mitchell, um, but there, there, there just can't be. There's no special inside knowledge here. Is there a procedure to give someone an oblique? <laughs> so oh, you want to donate? Yeah, I, I don't need. I don't think that's don't, an easy one. But I don't need two. Do you have two Do obliques we have to begin two with? Obliques? Yeah, I mean, oh, so you're willing to give one up? Yeah, I mean, look, now how would your oblique perform out my there? My oblique would it would be a lot like J.K. Dobbins. It would be one strong oblique, okay. for Christian McCaffrey yeah. and one uh, two abdominal muscles, kind of uh, flabby, mm -hmm. not very strong, <laughs> but at least it's functional. Right. I mean, look, it's a it's a thought. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that Christian McCaffrey's super injured oblique is much stronger and better than your current. <laughs> Healthy oblique right well, it's, now. Yeah, oh, He's like, I'll stick with the injured one. Certainly stronger, but mine doesn't hurt. Okay. Ooh, so he won't be in pain. Yeah. He'll just be incapable. He'll, he'll just be leaning over to one side. Your oblique couldn't hold up all the muscles above it. That's what I didn't think about yeah. that. Um, listen, we'll see. I'll what, do some sit-ups tonight. We'll, we'll see we'll what Jason's. This thing over. Yeah, do some sit-ups. We'll see what Jason's conviction about Elijah Mitchell translates to in terms of waiver priority and fab spend when we get into the waivers. Um. But it's, I mean, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a heck of a week, and this is make or break time for a lot of teams. It's not just you guys. I mean, uh, you're fighting for your future, and, and and you have to try to win a week and make some moves. Now, uh, in other breaking news, I am, I do have an appointment later today with a barber. Oh, okay. And, and if you've you noticed, don't have yeah. a hat on. Good man. <laughs> I didn't wear the hat today. Yeah, because you have respect. I feel like I've been, uh, I've been converted. Yeah, All I right. don't want to give, I, I don't want to give this person a hard time. Yeah. Nor do you want to give yourself a bad haircut. And now Mike would say, give him a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Look, do you pay this person? Yeah. Yeah. Do your job. It's not charity work. Now, would you go in there with gum in your hair, Mike? With gum in the hair? Yeah. I mean, are you willing to step it up? A little bit for the uh, uh, the barber, the hairstylist, possibly maybe some gum, maybe some motor oil. There, well, motor oil is better, I would assume, because you can like like. Have you ever had gum stuck in your hair? I uh, probably yeah, once or twice. I you have gotta cut that out. I have had many different stages of hair in my life. I had very long hair because I was a rocker in uh, junior high. You know, super metalhead. I got gum stuck in my hair. Ooh, and. They, we did the old... Uh, Do you freeze it? No, we did the peanut, peanut, butter. peanut butter trick. Oh. But, oh my gosh. Not a good time? It is not a good time at all. How long till you don't smell like peanut butter? Uh, that I don't recall. Who mm. cares? Peanut butter smells awesome. You would like a cologne that's peanut butter scented? Everyone would. Oh, dear. Skippy. <laughs> Skippy yeah. by... Uh, yeah, all right. At the FF Ballers over on X. Follow us over there. Give me your quick reaction to the Monday Night Football game. Well, I mean... <laughs> There's Jason. Okay. That's yeah. my quick reaction. It, it was a bit of a snooze fest. Um, it was Justin Herbert kind of fell out the clouds as uh, <laughs> like, 22 for 37, 227, and two, one interception, yeah, a sack. So not, I mean, not an awful performance, but, but if you had drafted Justin Herbert, you were riding high. But I had kind of talked – I don't know where I said it on which show, but he had a very plus schedule to start the season and – there's a stretch of games coming up here for Justin Herbert, so it was not going to shock me if he had fallen you know, off of the pace that he was on. Eckler, very, very tough game returning from the ankle injury. Also, it's against the Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott, I thought, looked very good. Uh, I think I saw that he was PFF's highest-graded passer of the week. He was 21 for 30, 272, a passing touchdown. He also had a rushing touchdown, which was what a sensational fake. I screamed at the television stupid like, <laughs> and because i thought he handed it off i was like <laughs> what is this dumb play then well I got me the cameraman everybody else got tricked as dak scampered for for a, a rushing touchdown there like a like an 18 yarder but it's this mike mccarthy offense is terrible it's it is just awful you had tony pollard against the chargers go 15 for 30 on the ground what did, there, I, did I got a watch alert that he had a 60-yard run. Was that something called back? He, was that just was, a big it, lie? It was a reception. Yes. Yeah, he had, which was a awesome. Oh, it was a reception. Okay, so he was 6 for 80. It was the insane because it was like a full broken play of, of he got tackled. Oh, yeah. and the, But the defender, 
I don't know, sold, just didn't, didn't, did not complete the tackle. Yeah, so the, was, the defender tackled him, wrapped him up, spun him around, and then all the other defenders are like, yeah, he's got this. That, that guy's tackled him. And then Tony Pollard got up, having not been tackled, yeah. and ran away from all the defenders. If I was looking at this game through the lens of what is to come, I would be pretty concerned about the Chargers, who are sitting at 2-3, and three, and replaced Mike Williams with nothing. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the headline. Huge. Not getting it done. QJ, so, Quentin got Johnston. The old, got the old goose egg. He's... Quentin Johnston, zero receptions on uh, two targets, including the final interception. Not stepping up. I mean, Joshua Palmer was four for 60. If it Joshua Palmer could lock four for 60 in as his weekly number, you'd be okay with it. Uh, Palmer had some some terrific receptions and the the even more concerning part here for for huge 21 routes that is fewer it's the worst nickname of all time it's fantastic just I just mean, just let it happen is yeah disgusting how do you spell huge uh we'll figure i'll get our Q? Top, I'll, I'll get our top Jew. people on it <laughs> okay thank you but he yeah. ran the, the point being quentin johnston ran fewer routes than gerald everett like they need him desperately yeah that's a huge disappointment Thank you. Yeah, nice. See, it's a good time. Yeah, it's yeah. a good time. <laughs> nice, bro. The, the point being, they need him. They drafted him in the first round, and he still can you barely get on the field. Always yeah. good. Well, if I traded for him in a dynasty league, I'd be worried. Oh, I would be. If I have him right now, I would be trading <laughs> him away. Someone trade for him. Oh, oh Papa that's Josh. Right. Papa Josh did oh, trade. Oh yeah. I forgot There's about this that. Shame. No fear. Do you think it was a, no, cu a you, cu huge that's mistake? That's stupidity. <laughs> you it's should have dynasty. massive fear. It's dynasty, you know. The future shall erase the present. <laughs> I, I, obviously, he is a rookie. There is still yeah. time in yeah. his career to come on strong and be better. But in the modern NFL, we see wide receivers with less Sky time. Moore. This isn't this isn't a situation anymore where. It's common for a year three breakout for wide receivers. That's the year you you know wide receivers get in and and, and get on the field and are good at least in their flashes. Like Rushy Rice, Rushy Rice, yes, is not playing a ton of snaps. Thirty percent of snaps last week, but he looks good. Yeah, He's, huge targets on the like when he plays, he gets targeted. Exactly, and there has been a common constant disappointment from training camp through preseason through. Uh, you know, uh, obviously in season, the opportunity has been there. He is needed. He is not stepping up or catching the ball. Addison, Flowers, Michael Wilson, mm -hmm. three rookies that have made their mark in Puka. certain games. Puka yeah. Nakua. Yeah, you have a lot of play. Even Jonathan Mingo's had some games. I mean, not big ones, but targeted. He's getting targets. Receiving it, the football. It feels very uh, Rager-esque. Sure. What's happening right yeah, now? Yeah, Perryman has been brought up, and you don't want that name brought up if you're a rookie. Nikhil Harry. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I mean, look, the biggest part is we would not care if Mike Williams was there. Correct. We'd be like, ah, there's no room for him. But there's so much room for him <laughs> right now, and I know it was Dallas. So, um, yeah, Papa Josh not pleased with our analysis on that one. But, um, look, let this the just to close that off, the nice thing for Dynasty is over this off season, I mean, he will probably still have a ton of value. Yeah. Like the the thing about knowing the Dynasty market, wide receivers with his draft capital heading into year two, often do not lose their lose a ton of value. Maybe he loses a and little. Mike bit, Williams could be but, gone. But the point being, uh, Josh is saying, tell him like I'm saying to trade him. <laughs> I'm telling you that because going into the off season. He probably has – it's just like Sky Moore where it was nothing happened. Oh, man. Nothing happened in his first year, and that is a terrible sign, and you should probably try to just recoup what you can. Yeah. 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 Could be wrong. Could, Quinn Johnson, maybe maybe we're all wrong, and, and he shows us and, and sometime between now and then. Remember out, when but, Devontae Parker was the like uh, the, 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 the one case yeah. of like, hold on, the, the old, hold on. The year five breakout. I think the issue with Huge is that pre-NFL draft, when we were just evaluating the talents and all the first round prospects or, or you know, much deeper than that, we all had massive red flags on Huge. He, he wasn't any of our favorite. You know, like 
Jackson Smith and Jigba is also having a poor start to his rookie yes, he season. Yes, he is. Um, you know, but his pre-draft process was like he, he's exceptional. I I believe in his talent. This is like kind of where you're seeing some of the worries you had on the prospect himself in huge. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to say too long there, but it's like Ceh. He was drafted because of the landing spot. Mm -hmm. in, yes. in, for a lot of you know, that was the reason why he went as high in in dynasty drafts. Um, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Bad news for the Foot Clan. Uh, Papa Josh has resigned. Uh, the breaking news is <laughs> resigned. He has left through the back door. He's taking and, uh, taking Quentin with him. For, one, for some reason, he's walking home. He has his car here. He is walking home. Yeah, but uh, head good, down. Good news for the Foot Clan. Job opening uh, <laughs> is available. Oh boy, let's, but it comes with Quentin Johnston. <laughs> oh yes, you do inherit the team. Um, this is so brutal. He has that one bad game here against Dallas. Uh, not one, but um, there is so much to talk about. Kyron Williams. Uh, Sean McVay thought he'd be good. He's not going to be good. Jason, you said that. Uh, Kyron Williams' ankle expected to keep him out of week seven. It's not considered long-term. Team hasn't made any moves. Right now, the healthy running back is Zach Evans, and he's going to play a crucial role on today's waiver wire show. Royce Freeman's on the practice squad. Uh, Sean McVay already came out and said, like, Zach Evans is the one that's likely to get the work at least early. But you have a real, like, Devonta Foreman, Darrington Evans situation. Uh, did I say Deontay or Devonta? You said Devonta. Oh, yeah, Deontay uh, Foreman. You have uh, Ingram, DeMarcado. It's, it should be Zach Evans. It really should be. But, but, I think it will. but performance could impact how much work they get through the game. Ronnie Rivers it was the backup. He's going to miss five uh, weeks with a PCL strain. Sprain. Yep. Strain, sprain. Well, sprain, one, strain. One's a muscle, one is a, a ligament. Yeah, Okay. Dan Campbell says uh, running back David Montgomery has a cartilage issue in the ribs, will be out for, quote, a little bit. Yeah, that means he's going to miss this week and then miss next week because they've got a bye week the following week. So that, Yeah, you've already kind of made that. That uh, is what's going to happen. And uh, you do have news that Jameer Gibbs is trending in the right direction for week seven, which is always the direction you want to trend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is that is absolutely true. And we'll talk uh, – We'll talk about that Lions backfield and waivers as well. Justin Fields, doubtful for week seven, could be longer than that, especially with the Bears having the number one and number two pick in the draft right now. Uh, you will have Mr. Badgett at quarterback. Bilbo Badgett. <laughs> yeah, that is as Mike <laughs> was calling him on Sunday. What's funny is I wasn't here for that. No. And when you were talking about Badgett, when you were talking about him on yesterday's show, before you told uh, me that, that no, Mike was, you got to be oh, kidding 100%, me. Oh, one hundred percent. All I could think of was Bill Bo Patchett. And oh then, yes, man, Mike said it. And that's locked that <laughs> locked that in. This is the only good news of Justin Bilbo. Fields missing some time is that we get a we get a new nickname here from Bill Bo Patchett. I mean, if you if that was your nickname coming in, this is your first start as a pro. Here comes Bilbo. Oh, yeah. All right, so there you go. Uh, that's not good for DJ Moore, by the way. Oh, no. No, it no. Is not. it's not good for anyone on the Bears. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, high ankle sprain. He's going to miss time. They're on the bye. It is the same ankle as last year. doesn't need another surgery, but the Tennessee Titans may be on the farewell tour for this group. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, knee sprain, not significant day-to-day. -day. They do play on Thursday night. I bet he's out there. I bet he is, but, I mean, is he good to go? Yeah, mobile. You know, is he mm -hmm. able to – what's the matchup there? Saints. Ooh. Yeah. Sorry, that was it's, it, visceral. It, it's a decision that people will have to make. Pat Frymuth expected to play against the Rams on Sunday. Welcome back, Pat. All right. The Muth will be Luth. And then uh, Tank Dell will be back from his concussion next week. Okay. Uh, yeah, or, sorry, that would be the next time they play because they are on by this week. Correct. So uh, that would be in a couple of weeks. And then Deontay Johnson, the 21-day window to be reactivated has been open. He had said he was fine. I would expect they'll try to get him out there. Oh, he'll he'll play this week. Okay. He Deontay, also, Deontay Johnson will be back. He also said he was day-to-day -day before being put on to IR. You're saying you question the uh, – Yeah. 
I think he will be veracity back too, of this man. But I mean, he's already lied to our faces. All right, uh, Jamal Williams is eligible to return. Doesn't mean they will. Uh, and that's it. There we go. That's today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Put me in, coach. I believe, <laughs> yeah, I believe it is time to talk running backs. Jason just took a deep inhalation of oxygen in order to. There are legitimately 10 running backs. That's not hyperbole or some random number. There are 10 running backs that all could be the correct slash best pickup of the week. Right now, you can see the the pathway for 10 different guys to be who you should be prioritizing, which means there are going to be so many bad pickups this week and so much money and waiver priority burned incorrectly. Can't burn it if you don't have it, Jay. Oh, yeah. nice, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am so happy that you have no fab right now. Yeah, but I got DeMarcado. I'm so going to throw him in there. It's funny because, <laughs> Andy, you made a trade earlier in the season to acquire more fab. First time ever. First time to ever. To be up over the uh, – You're. Uh, we start with 100. Yeah. You currently have more than 100. So That's you've right. got – you could do whatever you want. Yeah, it, it puts me in a tough position because there are players I want from this list that we're going to get into. But like you said, it, they are gambles. Most of them are gambles. Some of them are very, very short-term rentals. You have Bengals, Cowboys, Jets, Panthers, Texans, Titans on by, which means Mixon, Pollard, Brees, Miles Sanders and Chuba, Damian Pierce and Singletary, and Derrick Henry all on by. So you have a – outside of the injuries that are, right. people have already suffered at running back, you have a pile of bye week situations. It is going to be a mad fight on waivers this week. I mean, everyone's guns are drawn. And it is just... I'll bring my knife. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's got a gun and Mike's got a knife. <laughs> Mike's best... Be you better go trade for some fab. You want some, Mike? I have nothing. What kind of offer, I what kind of draft pick are you going to give me? Nothing to trade. Uh, I have let's, no players, let's get no into the, fab. Let's get into the guys. Uh, before, before we do that, though, I will say this. Like, I don't think I'm spending, I'm spending up in any big way. So, okay. uh, because I don't think the long-term value of the acquisitions this week exists. Uh, there, there are a couple of nuanced situations, and I, what I wanted to say at the top was just that it is a Tuesday episode being recorded at nine. It is 927 local time in the morning. We are going, we have a waiver wire rankings on the website. We are going to talk through these players, and we are going to get more information over the course of the week. And uh, you have to make a decision on your fab spin, but that doesn't mean that you stop paying attention. Like, you know, to Mike's infinite credit and shame, he invested on DeMarcado early in the week when the information we had was that he, he had performed well and would likely get opportunities. Mike needed a win. He went for it. But he didn't start DeMarcado last week, despite a $42 fab investment. Mm-hmm. He didn't start him, and you can't go into this week and, and spin up and then feel the sunk cost fallacy and just play them no matter what. So there we go. And and one other thing I would say before we get into all the specific names, because a lot of these situations are multiple backs on the same team where you're trying to decide is it which back it is going to be or which one's going to be more valuable. Um, when you're looking at these different teams, I think that the person that should spin up is the person who has the injured running back. Because you don't know if these guys are going to be a one-week. You know, like, is Christian McCaffrey going to play this week? We we don't know yet for sure. But maybe he misses two weeks. Maybe it's actually a multi-week thing. You know, that happens. And so the Christian McCaffrey manager is who should be spinning up in the San Francisco backfield. I, I think you're going to waste a lot of money in general. Where you're not going to waste money is if you are getting the insurance back for your situation because it will last as long as you need it to last. Right. So in, in the Christian McCaffrey manager situation, spinning up on the running backs there, uh, I I agree with Jason. I think Elijah Mitchell, after reading the comments from uh, Kyle Shanahan, I think Elijah Mitchell is the back to spend the, the money on for multiple reasons. One, uh, he said he barely got a practice in last week. That's why Jordan Mason was the first man up says that Elijah Mitchell has earned a lot in this offense. If you have McCaffrey, you can spend more because it represents insurance 
beyond this upcoming week. Jordan Mason, if McCaffrey misses, Mitchell and Mason will get work. Yes, both will, yes. If McCaffrey plays, I would not feel – like I, I feel like you could put Elijah Mitchell out there as a flex if McCaffrey plays against Minnesota. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yep. The other backs in this guaranteed-to-get-work category, like for me, I have Kyron Williams. Mm-hmm. I will 100% – and I'll just say it right now. Yeah, you're, you're going to get Zach Evans. I'm going to get Zach Evans – because Zach Evans represents the starter until my player returns, just like Jason said. And Zach Evans is 5% rostered. It's not the, you know, they play Pittsburgh, then they play Dallas. I'm not excited about that. But it's better than a blank spot in my lineup. He is interesting. If if you're unfamiliar with Zach Evans, if you weren't with us during the draft process, this is a rookie who slipped in the draft quite far. Yeah, I liked him on film and then he slipped to the point where I couldn't I wasn't allowed to like him anymore. Exactly. He he fell to the 6th round in the NFL draft, but this was a 5-star recruit coming out uh of high school was supposed to be the the, you know, the greatest uh next prospect. Um and I I really liked a lot of his film. He's very very fast. Um, so it it will be super interesting to see him get a full opportunity here on what is a pretty good offense for the Rams, and they're, the backfield here is Royce Freeman off the practice squad and Zach Evans, who will be the, the starter. I think he's going to get great opportunity. So if you don't have Kyron Williams, Zach Evans might, you know, uh, what are you investing? So if I am in need of a running back, which I think half of the people in leagues right now are in need of a running back. Um, all of these, so the names out there, Zach Evans, Elijah Mitchell, Craig Reynolds yes. will be D David Montgomery's replacement. Jameer Gibbs coming back, so it's it's still, are you sure, though? still messy there. I just like, if Jameer Gibbs is back, I mean, we, we have a game of no David Montgomery with Jameer Gibbs healthy. It was Jameer Gibbs got... 55% of the rushing attempts. Craig Reynolds was down at 13. Now, that was also – Zonovan Knight was there. He got 10%. He – 13%. 13%, of, 13 of the rushing attempts. Yeah, it was only four opportunities. Yes. Yeah. So, the – I'm just talking about, like, the, the pie. How much did he actually get? Zonovan Knight is is gone. He's, he's now hurt. But, like, if Jameer Gibbs is back, he – I mean, at least in the in the one game sample now, it, it's it's definitely different. The variables are here because he's coming off a hamstring injury. But do you really feel the confidence that if Gibbs is healthy, that Reynolds won't just see twenty percent of the attempts? I feel more confidence that he won't just see twenty percent of the attempts because of Gibbs coming off the injury and because of his performance last week after Monty went down. Which I thought, you know, I thought he he's I think he's more important to the offense than. You know, you you were standing for him before that last performance. Um, he didn't run the ball well this past no, week. No, he was ten for fifteen. But obviously, he was out there a bunch. Yeah, uh, the, the week prior, he he ran very well against Carolina. Seven for fifty-two, had a touchdown, and and the touchdowns really the the situation here. Jamal Williams last yeah. year, and and David Montgomery this year. Like when they get inside the five, I think they're gonna take that offensive line and push the defense into the end zone and hand it to a running back. So possibly, I don't, I don't know for sure that it will be him. Let me, let me just make, uh, let's like, make this clear for people real quick under the, the actual available everywhere players are, are only Zach Evans, Jordan Mason and Craig Reynolds, put them in order. Is will, it, do you put Zach Evans above Craig Reynolds or, or do you I, put Reynolds above Zach? Evans? I would put Evans above Reynolds. I would go Zach Evans, Craig Reynolds, Jordan Mason. Jordan Mason. In the much more rostered, but please pay attention category, Elijah Mitchell is down at 34%. Then you have like Roshan's at 60%. Jalen Warren could be out there because of uh, coming off the bye. Kareem Hunt had a better week at 45%. Jeff Wilson wasn't active last week. He should be active this week. And then Keontae Ingram should legitimately be up in the mix in Arizona against Seattle. Yeah, those those are all the names. The interesting name to me that I think is going to get lost in the the slew of injuries is Kareem Hunt. Sure. Because Kareem Hunt is a season long player. Like like Chubb is gone and Kareem Hunt kind of got lost because of their bye week. Uh you had the game where you had Deshaun Watson's backup, the rookie who was not prepared, come out and have no offense. That game didn't exist basically, and that was the 
second game back for Kareem Hunt. Then they go on a bye. The first time we see him like with full practices and not uh, uh, you know a quarterback unable to perform, he has a great game. He was a top 10 running back last week. Yeah, he had 41% of the running back attempts, 60% of the running back targets. I think uh, Kareem Hunt is needs to be picked up. I thought we'd be able to get the running backs before he took a break. We won't. I, <laughs> I need to talk about a lot more of them. Yeah. Um, so we'll take a quick break, come back, and then we'll hit the running backs, the rest of them, and, and move on to wide receivers. So, so moving to some other names, I mean, one to pay attention to, especially and drop it like it's hot, Chuba Hubbard, who's been very good. We don't know what the long-term health of Miles Sanders is going to turn into, but Hubbard's going into the bye. So when sure. I say drop it like it's hot, if you're new to the show, that means after waivers process in the morning, you know, there are a lot of teams that are not going to be able to afford just keeping Chuba Hubbard on their bench potentially. And so they're going to throw him back out there. He was very good yet again. And uh, they play Houston after the bye week. So just like I think Chuba Hubbard is playable against Houston regardless of Miles Sanders' status. So if this is not the week you need a running back, please pay attention to Chuba. Yeah, it is, the same could be said uh, for Jeff Wilson, who could be the best pickup here because that Miami Dolphins offense is – you just want as many pieces of that as you can. Jeff Wilson is a guy that right now, like his first week active – don't know that you want to start him you you know you kind of need to so it's almost like he's got a bye week whenever he um is active and then you've got uh you've got the backups that have relevancy Jalen Warren and another guy on bye Tajay Spears has looked really good this is a team that's going to be without Ryan Tannehill meaning they're going to be down a little bit more they're going to have their you know two minute drill type of offense out there which we've seen Tajay doing some real damage in the receiving game for the Titans, but uh, Jalen Warren, you know, he, coming off a bye, he might be out there. And, and there's more names. I mean, Latavius Murray is somebody I want to bring up because the consolidation of opportunities, like Damian Harris, I, I don't think we're seeing him back out there on the field in the immediate future. Murray took a bunch of snaps. Uh, he was 12 for 45. He missed. He, he got dragged down on the one. All right, he's always a threat for a touchdown, and they're trusting him in the passing game. So Murray is somebody you can throw out there in a pinch, and the same goes for Zeke. I mean, Zeke had he had a touchdown. Uh, he ended up with a huge touchdown called back, and he's getting snaps as well. So, you know, if you are staring down Elijah Mitchell with CMC active or you're staring down Zeke or, or Latavius, are you going with Mitchell? I will probably go with, Mitchell, then Latavius, then Zeke. Yeah. Um, uh, Mitchell has the potential. I mean, we, we here's the thing with Elijah, Elijah Missel. Um, when he's been given the opportunities at, at, in replacement, he's been outstanding. Like really great for fantasy. He has, I believe, as many rushing games of 75 yards or more as Christian McCaffrey does. And and Shanahan came out and said, like he's earned. Uh, in in the past, you know the the role, and so I, I'm very excited to have Elijah Mitchell. Should should Christian McCaffrey not play, and then Latavius Murray, you just want a piece of that offense. That that's why Zeke to me is third because if you're comparing, like, oh, the 49ers offense has been great, the Bills offense is great, and then the Patriots offense they they is off offensive. Uh, if yeah, okay. Um, and then you just have the, just the cursory backups like Bigsby if an injury happens and Keyshawn Vaughn and, and, and Royce Freeman and Rico Dowdle. So. Before we move on, Roshan Johnson, Deonta Foreman. Um, how do you see that breaking down? I think it, I, I would be aggressively going after Roshan. I know they won't have fields, so the offense won't be fantastic, but maybe Bilbo will, will check the ball <laughs> down to, to uh, Roshan and give us some fantasy value. I have, Does he have hairy feet then? Of course, of course. He he's a okay. hobbit. Giant, mm -hmm. hairy feet. Got uh, it. Got it. That's good. The my still, concern. He still wears cleats. You're not going to see him. <laughs> but the cleats are probably the cleats are huge. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Go I on. have my concerns for Deonta Foreman that like, if Roshan is back, it might be Roshan and, and oh, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm I'm out on uh, if Roshan's back, I'm completely out on Foreman. 
Yeah. I, I am not as out as you two, and I know you guys uh, were able to watch that game a little closer this weekend than me. You talked about how a lot of his production came at the end of the game, um, that Deonta Foreman wasn't even the clear starter without Roshan. I still feel like there is a, 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 a real chance here that it is Deonta Foreman with Roshan staying in the role Roshan was playing when it was Khalil Herbert and Roshan. It, it, the debate may be moot with the, the 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 way the offense with Bilbo with Bilbo because because yeah. this was a this was a backfield we were talking about ignoring. We literally weren't even playing Khalil Herbert for a couple a few weeks That's with true. Justin Fields, uh, and and Miles Sanders is going to get dropped in some leagues. So if he does, please just grab him. He he's going to be the starter. I'm right. not saying Once he's playing he gets well, healthy. but. At the wide receiver position, uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, my number one target's uh, Rashi Rice. Uh, Same, yep. He, he's not getting as many snaps. We have an update, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Badgen's feet are not hairy per Kyle's quick research. Uh, I'm that's, not sure that's, how you That's actually him. false. Uh, I've seen Bilbo's feet, and they yeah. are extremely hairy. Kyle, Google <laughs> this is terrible Bilbo research. Badgent. Um so funny story here on on Rushy Rice. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a funny story on on uh, you know the Shire. <laughs> we do have a photo of him in the Shire. Oh, all right. You can you can see so it then in his ours. feeder for furry. Um, <laughs> have you guys noticed Rushy Rice on uh, our waivers? Yes, I have. Of course. Yeah. You you want to know why? <laughs> Rushy Rice is on waivers. Why is that? I was shocked that he was. Yeah. I noticed it completely, and I was super mad I added Mims instead of him before Sunday. Yeah, what an idiot. Well, you couldn't because he played on Thursday. I mean, yeah, before Thursday. Um, Well, I was traveling, <laughs> Oh no! and I'm in too many leagues. Oh, no. And I needed a quarterback in one of my leagues where I've got Rushy Rice, and so uh, I picked up uh, Deshaun Watson and dropped him. I did see the Watson pick up. In, in the a, wrong league. Yeah, I was like, why are you picking up Deshaun Watson? I've got uh, – that made no sense because I did what? it in the wrong league while traveling And you didn't want to say it because you don't want people to know that Rashi's I, on the waiver I, wire. I, I, I messaged uh, my oh, co-manager. Oh, I messaged my co-manager the minute that the waivers went through, and I go, what did I do? The <laughs> co-manager's responsible yeah. for you during travel. Yeah, whoops. What in the world? So – my bad. I really wish my team you're had Rushy Rice. I'll, I'll put it back. Uh, as I say, you're not getting him back. No, I know it. Um, Jamison Williams, Rashi Rice, Josh Downs has been a PPR monster, uh, regardless of the yards per catch. Those are the top names at the wide receiver position that are in the 50% rostered category. If you're looking well below that percentage of uh, you know, being on people's teams, Wandale, Kendrick Bourne, Rashid Shahid, who keeps making splash plays, those would be names to bring up. But I think Rice, here's what we know about Rashi Rice and what I think is going to happen. One, this offense is not quite what it should be. So, you know, Sky Moore, MVS, who just does cardio, um, you know, these players are okay, not. He's got to be so fit. They're not getting it done. Now, when Rashi Rice has been given the ball, things happen. Mm -hmm. He's also, he's extremely fast north and south. So they've put putting him into a position where he can show that speed off. He was four for 72 last week, and when the snaps go up, the targets will go up because every time he's been given an opportunity to be on the field, they target him. Mm -hmm. So I think that he is the best long-term pickup. Now, Jameson Williams is going to make splash plays, and maybe he's the one you, you think you want, but this guy is not integral enough to the offense, nor do I see the path for him to get there. Yeah, I, I, I agree completely with what you're saying. The, um, uh, you know, the, the the talent and the draft draft capital of Jameson Williams is really enticing, especially getting another piece. You know, we want pieces of good offenses, um, but 23% of the snaps last week for Jameson Williams, it's scary to get that on your team and, and you know, have to put him in your lineup. I, I think my favorite name this week, though, is Wandale Robinson. You know, you talk about Josh Downs being a PPR machine. Paris Campbell ran zero routes. Yep. And Wandale has looked pretty sure. good, and um, you know he had eight receptions for sixty-two yards. He's he's actually got five or more receptions in three straight weeks. So if you're in a full PPR league, Wandale probably shouldn't be on waivers, and he is actually widely available. I would take Downs over Wandale. I would not. Yeah, because we've seen it from Downs for a for a quite a a stretch, and Wandale that offense I just hate. 
<laughs> I have no. Con- I mean, his best game came without his starting quarterback. Well, and so, uh, but he's also, he's been recovering from the. Oh, we've from, been saying he's been recovering for years. When's he recovered? Maybe never. When's the period at the end of the sentence? Maybe never. But I mean, you had a big game from Darius Slayton. Why don't you like Darius Slayton? Yeah. I mean, I if 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 Paris is not getting carries and well, it, I, I mean gonna, uh, snaps, going to say the, the Darius Slayton at least catches it beyond the line of scrimmage. Yeah, which uh, Tyrod Taylor had two beautiful deep passes to uh, to Slayton. I was going to mention the other name of if you are in a deep league, the the transition for the Giants that has happened. Like it's it's Slayton, it's Wandale Robinson, it's Jalen Hyatt. Those are the three guys who are actually getting the run. Hyatt has pretty much no production so far. He had such a good but, catch in that last game that got called back on a legal man downfield. Yeah, but but Jalen Hyatt has an elite attribute. He is super fast, and if they can figure some things out, like this is not like a 10-team, 12-team league ad that I'm looking to go after, but there's people playing 14 and 16-teamers. Will you drop uh, Quentin Johnson and Jahan Dotson to pick up these players? Uh, I would drop Jahan Dotson for sure. Quentin Johnston is for, he's likely a drop as well. Yeah, the the, the other names Compared that we're bringing other guys, up, yeah. I would absolutely so, rather have them on my roster. Jahan Dodson has been a an unmitigated disaster. When you talk to – I mean, we spent a lot of time talking about Quentin Johnston dynasty and long term. Right. Like, this is year two for, for Jahan Dodson. He had a really bad drop this last week. He has not been targeted heavily. Curtis Samuel's a much better player than him. Every expectation we have for Jahan Dotson has not been met. So when you think about him in, in Dynasty, are you moving forward without him? Are you trying to he, cash in on the early name value? Um, uh, no, I'm I'm not. I still think he's got value, and I think he's got talent. Um, unlike, you know, Cuge or Sky Moore or these other names we're talking about, those guys have really never showed it. I mean, a, a, a play here or there, but Jahan Dotson, his entire rookie season, other than when he was injured, um, was really good like we, we've we seen it um so you know you add that to the fact that he was a first round draft pick I don't believe that Jahan Dotson is going to be worthless for dynasty for his career obviously right now it's not it's not working out something's going on with the with Dotson I don't know if it's health or what but um I mean, he's dynasty wise I'm not worried it's so bizarre because he's, he's out, out there. there for all the snaps I mean 80 percent of snaps the last two weeks, he's averaging 83% on the season, and he's just not getting targets. So, so New Di- offensive coordinator, new quarterback, and Dynasty, we haven't seen what we wanted. Yeah, Dynasty-wise, I'm going to hold on to Dotson because it, it would not be surprising for the Manders to have a huge shakeup for, uh, in, in their coach situation over this offseason. At the tight end position, Pat Fryermuth, we said he's coming back from injury, 52% rostered, off the bye, he would top the list for me if yeah. he is in your league. C- certainly. Um, he's rostered in half the league, so you know, just check. Um, if he's out there, he is a better, more reliable name that could be a weekly starter versus trying to find a, a, streaming, a streaming candidate. Um, Jake Ferguson is going into the bye, had a horrible performance last night. No qualms about letting him go to replace him this week, right? No, I don't think so. Jake Ferguson hasn't established himself as a must start player. If you look at his, uh, you know, he's got one game. We're going into week seven. He's got one game with 10 fantasy points. So this isn't a guy that, like, I'm not saying, you know, he's bad, but you don't need to roster a bye week tight end to hold on to someone that isn't regularly, you know, scoring. 10 points here's some breaking news for you Dalton Schultz has been the tight end five six and two over the last three yeah. weeks he goes into the bye is he somebody you're holding through the bye or are you moving on from him um personally I'm not gonna hold Dalton Schultz um through a bye week he has had three good weeks in a row it was three touchdowns in a row um I mean would you he drop is, him for Michael Mayer, who's going to get yeah, some conversations this week, five for 75? That's a perfect example. I would rather have Michael Mayer because I think Michael Mayer is more talented. We saw him actually get more involved. This is a uh, highly touted rookie tight end who we were really disappointed Which to start the season. Which you love, rookie tight end. <laughs> we were really disappointed <laughs> to start the season that he wasn't really involved. He hadn't you know, become the starting 
tight end for the Raiders, and I, I was a little surprised at that given his talent, but we have now seen it shifting. Uh, his route percentage over the last three weeks, 30%, 46%, now 64% of the routes run this last week. He led the team in yards with 75 yards and five receptions on six targets, playing 81% of the snaps. So if you could see a transition being made where it's like, oh, he's going to become their receiving tight end and he's talented. Johnny Smith got back into the end zone. He's running a ton of routes, the third most on the team. And this was a week where he was kind of banged up. We didn't know if he'd play. He played. He was integral. I do think Johnny Smith is the least sexy pickup you could ever put into your tight end position that might get you more points than some of the sexier ones. Gerald Everett, I think he's going to be needed. I think this offense had a tough matchup. He got into the end zone for the first time this year. It wasn't super impressive. Do you have any interest in Everett? Yeah, he. I, I do. Um, he's on a good offense. He plays a lot of snaps. And he's necessary. So when you're looking at all the garbage tight ends, he's he's one of them. Luke Musgrave was on the bye. He's coming back. Do you have interest in Musgrave, Mike? Uh, yeah, I think I have more Musgrave interest in like Gerald Everett. I, I would agree with that. I, I, I think Mus I like Musgrave's kind of at the TV top of my list. Yeah, well, not only that, but he's playing against the Denver Broncos and the Vance Joseph-led defense yep. currently. Uh, of the Denver Broncos is just so exploitable at tight end. They are currently ranked, uh, let me check, 32nd uh, nice. against tight end. So, yeah, Musgrave. It's behind the London Beef Eaters. <laughs> Musgrave coming off of the bye as a rookie in a great matchup. He's getting opportunities. I mean, even including the injury game, he's averaging nearly five targets a game. Yeah, he'd be at the top of my list. I would agree. I would rather have him than Mayer. Yeah. And then are you making anything of the Trey McBride actually played more? I'm just going to confirm. I thought I had read he, he, played, he, he played, played, played more than Zach Ertz for the first time ever. Yeah, more routes, more snaps. And, and he came through. I know one of them was a, just a the stinkiest of garbage because it was like at the end of the game what's, where they were losing 9-26. to But he 4 for 62. No, I, I couldn't be on, making less of it. Yeah, I'm not making him. anything of it. But I'm paying attention to it okay. because the tra it, as much for being anti Zach Ertz as I am pro uh, Trey McBride. Because if if this transition goes further this week, if it's like oh Trey McBride's playing even more, Zach Ertz is playing even less, you need to be aware of that and shift the expectations. Because to start the season, it seemed like Zach Ertz was yes very very reliable in a PPR league. C defensive pickups. Cleveland plays on the road against Indianapolis and Gardner, Gardner Minshew, who will throw. Two yep. interceptions, and they will be horrendous looking. It is such – Well, they'll be good-looking passes, but they'll, no, just, they'll, no, go, no. they'll go right to the defender. Oh, okay. You're saying like – I'm, like, I'm saying it'll be a tight spiral. spiral. Yeah. I don't know about that. I saw some <laughs> fluttering ducks in that last game. Uh, what a great matchup for Cleveland. The fact that they had a bye week last week is, is so good for everyone because they are – widely available and they shouldn't because they're one of the best defenses in the league yeah, they, and they play seattle then they play arizona yeah so the cleveland browns are i mean i, I would you need to put them on your, run. you need to put them on your team and you need to keep them on your team that is my opinion with cleveland yeah. because uh i i don't have their schedule directly in front of me but i remember looking give me their playoff I, give me their playoff three games because i think they're juicy so they in weeks 15 through 17 chicago yeah Houston, mm -hmm. the Jets. There you go. Beautiful. I mean, there there is a chance that is <laughs> Bilbo. Uh, no, no. By the Fields. I don't know what's better for fantasy. It might be better that it's Fields. But, yeah, Fields, um, Stroud, you know, he's been good, but it's Cleveland. They play a lot of man. They're tough yeah. defense, Miles Garrett. And then uh, Zach Wilson. Mm -hmm. So, Or will it be Rodgers by then? The Miracle Man. Already on the field throwing I, passes. Look, I, I am impressed that he's standing up without crutches and doing this. I'm also terrified for the man because I'm like, if you slip, if you take the wrong step, you just had surgery on your Achilles. That seems like a – I doubt that's in the protocol, like freewheeling it a couple of weeks yeah. after. And you could be on one of those super dope scooters, man. I know. This is your scooter – around. A scooter chance. Who, would, who wouldn't want to do that? Uh, yeah, so I <laughs> other – Good pickups at uh, defense. I'm going to throw the the Raiders out there. I know that Ooh. they are 
a, a team that you don't think of as a great defense. But I the threw last, them out there last week. Yeah, the the last couple weeks, um, you know, they they shut down the Packers. The Packers only scored 13 points on them, and then uh, obviously it was the Patriots here with, where they only scored 17 points, but now they go and play against Bilbo This is a, Badgett. a Mount Doom situation? Yeah, so I, I'm fine playing the Raiders this week. It's terrible. This is a terrible show. Um, the Rams play Pittsburgh. They're at home. Pittsburgh is not – they don't have a lot of ceiling as an offense. Yep. Uh, and so, yeah, no, I love the Raiders. I think the Raiders are a great option. I think they're rostered because people played them against – at least some people played them against the Patriots. But if they're there, grab them. Tampa's defense. Yeah, I was going to say the Bucks versus the Atlanta Falcons. That's their uh, – like, I don't know if the Bucks are putting up huge fantasy points for the defense, but they're, just they're, solid. they're, they're good. Yeah. And Atlanta has been – trailing a lot and look even though Ritter has been playing better I would like to have a defense against a trailing Desmond Ritter throw me some interceptions yeah and I'll, for the same reason I'll throw out the Jacksonville Jaguars um against the Saints the 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 Saints offense is broken and I love playing defenses against broken things full stream ahead All right, streaming quarterback options this week, Mike. Who are you throwing out there? I'm going to go with Sam Howell. <laughs> he gets to take on the New York Giants. I know that the Giants just had a, a very uh, tough game there with the Buffalo Bills, and we didn't get to see the Josh Allen we're used to seeing. But I think that they that, that Sam Howell with the quarterback options out there, he can get it done. He's quietly the quarterback 12 on the season coming off of Two delightful games as the QB5 and the QB7. He is willing to run the ball. And and he's, I mean, he is getting it done. Like two weeks ago, 388 yards in the air against Chicago. They're one and a half point road favorites against the Giants this week. I'll throw Brock Purdy out there, the redemption game for Brock Purdy. It's going to be redeemed. Uh, Monday Night Football against the Minnesota Vikings. They are allowing 75.2% completion rate. Second highest in the league, and uh, they're going to need Purdy to to get it together. I think Debo, I think he's going to play. I think McCaffrey's going to play, so the weapons should be back uh, in and full it, form. It can't rain in there, inside the dome. That is correct. Which is a uh, well, know, I mean, it can rain like. Dollars. Are you talking about his little like water fumble? I'm t- yeah, as I'm calling I'm t- as I'm calling it. These hands. Yeah, they uh, <laughs> they, it slipped out. That's a bad feeling. Like you saw his face in the slow mo. And he's going back to pass, and the ball just flies backwards. That's not where you wanted it. No. Um, I'm going to throw out Geno Smith. Uh, he's playing against the Cardinals. He hasn't had great fantasy production, not since week two. So you might find him on a lot of waivers after um, waivers clear. Same with Brock Purdy because of his bad match, uh, bad game this last week. Um, look for them. If they're not there today when you're making your claims, look for them tomorrow because I think they'll hit a lot of waivers. The Cardinals ranked 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to the quarterback position. Last week, Matthew Stafford um, was a little bit disappointing against them because the touchdowns were run in, not thrown in. However, there were two really bad drops right in the end zone, mm-hmm. hitting Puka in the hands and hitting uh, mm-hmm. Higby in the hands. So the, he, Stafford should have had you know, a lot more fantasy points. All right. Uh, I think that's going to do it. Tomorrow we have Hungry for more of the Thursday night preview. Lots to talk about. We'll react to the waiver wire and what transpired in our leagues and uh, and in your leagues. And we'll get to the starts of the week on Thursday. More matchups. The fantasy face-off with the wheel. Oh, Oh, yeah. We're back. We're back, baby. Nice. Yeah, buddy. Nice and comfy. This one shouldn't even count. Oh, you know what? You can sub in pretty much anybody for DeMarcado. You still would have been uh, (laughs) – you still would have been shamed. All right, that is going to do it for today's show. Talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.